You think Botox is entirely safe to use and that the only outcome will be a smoother face? Well, I got some bad news for you. Not only can Botox produce unwanted cosmetic effects, but it can also seriously harm your long-term health, turning your life into a nightmare. So if you are a Botox user, or if you use any other injections containing botulinum toxin, you might want to hear what I have to say, something which cosmetologists will not tell you. One of the most dreadful side effects that can occur after the use of Botox is known as cosmetic botulism, iatrogenic botulism, or impaired neuronal communication syndrome. Before we dive into the mechanism of how this side effect occurs, let's explore the symptoms experienced by its victims. So here's a closer look at what it can do to your body. Brain fog and memory issues. INCS can lead to cognitive difficulties, like difficulty concentrating, memory problems, and trouble finding words. People often describe it as having a fog in their head sensory overload. Victims may become hypersensitive to light and sound, experiencing photophobia, light sensitivity, and phonophobia, sound sensitivity. This makes daily life much more challenging. Pain and discomfort. INCS can affect the peripheral nervous system, leading to persistent pain, burning sensations, and tingling in the limbs, face, and torso. Some have compared the pain to having broken glass under their skin or feeling like acid drops. Breathing issues. Breathing problems are common with shortness of breath, arrhythmia, rapid heartbeat rate, chest pain, and dizziness. Some individuals may even experience temporary cessation of breathing, making it incredibly distressing. Psychological struggles. INCS can cause panic attacks, severe anxiety, and a constant sense of hopelessness. People often become fixated on their symptoms, which can be mentally exhausting. Chronic weakness. Most INCS patients report a chronic sense of weakness, even with simple tasks like holding a cup for a few minutes. It's as if your energy is perpetually drained. What's truly surprising is that these symptoms can persist for months to years after Botox injections. INCS can develop after both high and low doses, so there is no safe amount. Most of these symptoms develop within hours to three months after Botox injections. The progression of most symptoms is slow, and new symptoms may be added gradually, even up to a year after injections. This is attributed to the gradual spread of the toxin through retrograde axonal transport, leading to crisis when the toxin interacts with new neural networks. It's also suggested that there may be peripheral and perineuronal deposits of the toxin, with gradual release contributing to this crisis. The cause of such a dreadful side effect in the form of iatrogenic botulism is quite simple. It's the generalized spread of the toxin throughout the body. It's now proven that rarely toxin can diffuse into bloodstream or nervous system from the injection site. In the case of rapid onset of symptoms, it is most likely hematogenic spread, which means the toxin enters the bloodstream. And in the case of the first symptoms appearing days or even weeks later, it spreads through a nervous system via retrograde axonal transport, which occurs much more slowly. You might wonder why we don't hear more about diagnosis and issues caused by so-called beauty injections. Well, there are a couple of reasons of this lack of awareness. Firstly, as I explained before, the symptoms of cosmetic botulism often don't show up straight away. They can take weeks to appear. Plus, these symptoms may seem completely unrelated to Botox. Imagine you got a Botox injection and three weeks later you wake up with a terrible headache, chronic fatigue, muscle pain, flu-like symptoms, dizziness, and more. It's quite common for people not to connect these issues to their cosmetic treatment, because no one warned them about the possibility of such side effects. Instead, many people in this situation 
end up running from doctor to doctor, including neurologists and psychiatrists. Unfortunately, they often receive erroneous diagnoses like depression and panic attacks, and their tests don't reveal much. Meanwhile, new symptoms keep cropping up making things even more confusing. Only a few well-informed doctors ask a simple question – have you recently had Botox? Some affected individuals then start actively looking for information about systemic side effects of Botox and eventually find others who share similar clinical experiences. This lack of awareness in society happens because neither the patients nor most doctors immediately connect the horrors they are going through with those seemingly harmless beauty injections. The second reason is that even if a patient finds a knowledgeable doctor who knows about this possible effect of Botox, diagnosing it is challenging. Unlike some straightforward tests you can get at a regular clinic, detecting botulinum toxin in the body is quite complex. There is no easy and accessible test for it, like a blood sugar test. When it comes to foodborne botulism, for example, samples of food are typically examined for the presence of the bacterium that produces this toxin. This method doesn't work for iatrogenic botulism, because there is no contaminated food to test. Additionally, the gold standard test, which involves injecting mice, is not ideal for iatrogenic botulism as it lacks sensitivity. So even if you are in a terrible shape and suspect you are suffering from a iatrogenic botulism, it's challenging to find a lab that can conduct this specific type of analysis that can confirm your suspicion. This leads to the condition remaining largely underdiagnosed. Plus, don't forget about the marketing and PR efforts of Botox and Dispert manufacturers. It's not like they're interested in a popularization of the fact of existence of iatrogenic botulism and possibility of toxin spread from the injection site. However, fortunately for us, there is an increasing number of scientific studies on this topic, and the clinical picture of this issue is becoming more widely known among healthcare professionals. The link to the literature you can find in the video description.